Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Board of Education meeting for January 20th in 2020. Please rise to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Statement out of the notice.
had so many different foods and met so many lovely people. And just the sights alone was just amazing. Um, some of the slave castles was definitely um, heavy on my heart. But overall, um, I think it, you know, I just wanted to share it with the children um, to let them see um, what I saw. Um, so we got to do a presentation. This is just a preview. <coughs> the big one is coming at the uh, February meeting. Unfortunately, sometimes it's very hard. So I don't know if we ask if you guys can take recent pictures of your children. Sometimes then we end up using pictures from the child's social media accounts. And those aren't always that good because, you know, they put filters on them. They put butterfly stuff all over their face. <laughs> so, so we don't have good pictures sometimes. So we ask that we do get a recent picture of the child. Um, and we also ask what you last saw the child wearing. And also, sometimes we get into a problem when we ask for the children's friends. Uh, a lot of times, some families don't really know who their close friends are. So we go by what information we can get. So again, that's how we ask you for your help to try to know more about who your kids hang out with, where they hang out. Uh, real quick, just so I can touch on something else. The, our police department now, we have something called evidence.com. We have the, the citizen capture app. 
Um, so you guys can download that. It's very, it's actually very simple. Um, anything like pictures, any type of evidence that you want to like send directly to our department, right? It, it'll upload directly to us. So we're we're actually trying to, you know, we've actually caught up with the department <coughs> as well. So I just wanted to to touch on that a little bit. And then the other thing we're missing, kids, is the the Amber Alert always comes up, which if you're not familiar, it's just it's this huge alert that goes out through the whole state, different states that we feel the kid may be in. Your cell phone gets a special ring. So a lot of times the families are asking why there's no Amber Alert. So there's certain, luckily the Amber Alert is only used for very severe cases. And when I say luckily is because then you pay attention to it. If an Amber Alert was issued for every missing kid, people would stop paying attention to it. So it has, we have to believe that the child has been abducted and there's a reason to believe that the abducted child may be in danger. And there also there's a reason to believe that the Amber Alert would assist in locating the child. There's a little bit more stuff, but again, I have to let you guys, it has to be, we have to know, have a reason to believe they're in danger. So we don't use it for a missing kid or runaway kid. It depends if other things develop where we feel if this is a criteria, then it could change to an Amber Alert. Um, the big thing that we deal with now are cell phones. Um, and I like to say, you know, we get mad at them, but they're not going away, so we have to learn how to use them and how to work with that. So we, we fall into problems with the cell phones because the, the families don't know their child's login information. So, you know, there's, there's things like find my iPhone that can help us find people, but if nobody knows how to log into the child's account, then there's nothing we can do. And people think we can just call Verizon, get information. There's, all, there's certain criteria, again, for Verizon to give us information. For a kid that ran away, they're not going to give it to us most of the time. So we ask that. We know that it's hard with technology because the older we get, I have to learn about stuff as when we deal with the kids. So we have to learn how apps work. And when I first got into the juvenile bureau, I didn't, know how, I didn't know how Twitter worked. And I was on the bus with some kids from the high school, and I talked to the kids. Like, how does this Twitter thing work? <laughs> so we all have to learn. And it's hard to keep up because then the kids get new apps every so often. It looks like Instagram has been here for a while, staying in Snapchat, but then there's other just web pages they can use that we have to learn how to use. So we ask, it's hard, but you, have, you can review these apps with your kids. Like I went on Instagram, I put Parents Guide, and this 25 page booklet is there. Um, it is long to read, you, I also suggest you go on YouTube and you can put like, learn how to use Instagram for parents, and I'm sure there's many videos made by people that can teach you how to use it. Um, also, like the passwords, I suggest sometimes, the, you know, there's the iTunes store, the Play Store where they download apps. You can set restrictions on it where you have to put a password to download it so that the kids don't have access to just download whatever they want. For example, even Instagram, if they download it, you have to be 13 to have an account. But you could just put a fake birthday, you get it. So these are things you can talk to your kids about. You sit down every so often, you review the apps with them, see who they're talking to. If you have any questions, you can always call us. We don't mind helping you guys out because it helps us out. <laughs> so it's something we want. We don't mind talking to you about anything. Um, if anybody has any quick questions about anything, uh, yeah, I just want to touch on something real quick. Um, the uh, cell phones with children, the kids are getting younger and younger that we're seeing. Um, there's a lot of information. That, I mean, it's instant. It's instant information. It's spread so quickly at Facebook Live. Uh, these kids that, like, when I was younger, obviously we, we didn't have these type of things where it's just instant communication. You had to go to, like, a pay phone or pick up your phone or, you know, now they can literally, like, pick up a phone and they, there's that face-to-face -face interaction with these kids. And um, the detectives in our unit, we've noticed that um, they're getting younger and younger with smartphones. Um, and it's in regard to, like, parents um, and, you know, a certain obligation that you may have, um, just take into consideration that when you have an eight-year-old that has a smartphone, they have access to not only kids' YouTube videos, they have access to pretty much everything. Um, and that includes other people, that includes adults. Um, so <coughs> you know, we just try to you know, have people keep that in mind, that the younger that they are, you know, the more they're not as responsible yet. So just, you know, just factor that, that into your mentality when, when you, you, know, you get your kid a new iPhone X, um, you know, seven, eight years old, that now they have this capability to interact with everybody in the world, essentially, so, um, you know, strangers included, um, so just, you know, try to have your kids pass passwords and kind of know what they're doing, especially when they're younger. I um, mean, yeah, at all ages, you kind of know what they're doing, but, you know, for eight, nine, ten years old, because we're seeing younger and younger and younger with these cases that we're doing, so, just, just you know, touch on that. 
So if anybody wants any, uh, to talk to us further, the juvenile number is 908-474-8520. And I'm Detective Steve and Detective Dave. Would anybody have a question for us? I have a question. Yeah. So when you have these um, threats that are made via social media, <coughs> for instance, at McManus, they had that rifle posted on Snapchat. Yeah. How is that handled by you guys? It's handled immediately. Um, and it's so the, one of the worst incidents we can get, and unfortunately it happens. Mm -hmm. The, I can't really talk to you about how we investigate it, but the thing is, the school knows right away too, the whole city knows right away. We notify everybody appropriately, um, and we work on lo locating who posted it, and then dealing with it from there. Um, I, I can't, yeah, like I said, I can't talk to you about how I investigate it. Oh, no, no, yeah, but, I'm just kind of wondering how, like, what the aftermath is, you know, whether those kids are prosecuted, whether there's any repercussions. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll discuss a little bit, not just with that, but with everything. If a kid, like, we, when I talk to the children, you know, we say, you make a mistake. There's still children. Charging a child with a crime is the last thing that we try to do or hope to do. Mm -hmm. So the, we do have things that we do, we say in-house, it's called a station house adjustment. So I'll use a very minimal example, like we have shoplifting, kids do shoplifting. Um, instead of charging the child with a crime, having them go to court, we understand, you know, they made a mistake. So we have, for Station House, the county provides a shoplifting seminar. That the, it's every couple months and the kids go to it, and shoplifting is discussed, why it's bad, a police officer goes there, a representative from, say, Target would go there, just to discuss why it's bad, mm -hmm. to try to, what do you say, like, you know, fix the mistake that you made so that you don't make that mistake when you're 18. Because when you're 18, just like when you go to college, nobody's gonna walk you through the process. In high school, the teachers help you with your homework. When you go to college, here's the assignment that's due on this day. So it's the same thing with us. We help you through the process to try to fix the, fix the mistake you made. But when you're 18, there's nobody helping you out. But are they monitored further? I mean, just if, they, if someone has made a threat like that, are those children monitored further just in case? Are there any other safety precautions placed for our children's sake, the other yeah. children's sake? I'll talk to you more later mm -hmm. if you'd like. Yeah. Because yeah. I know you want to know more about that specific yeah. incident. So we can talk further. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. And, and uh, what advice? What advice can you give to parents on their kids as far as you as a parent knowing where your kids at? When are you coming home, and when does panic set in? Example, like if I just, just an example, I have a thirteen-year-old kid. Okay, fine. And you know, with our everyone's. Uh, you know, everyday operations, kids are pretty much on their own, but they all, everybody has cell phones. Fine. Uh, my kid has school, he's going to play practice, he should be home by 5 o'clock. Well, he's not home at 5 o'clock, or she's not home at 5 o'clock, he's not home at 6 o'clock. Uh, what, what advice can you give to parents with <coughs> their kids to let them totally be aware before, you know, five hours of panic sets in? Because you expect your child to be home at 5.30 at night. We yes. wait to 9.30 tonight. To no, well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, parents have got to be in tune with their own kids. Like when I know where they are, when they're going to be, when they're going to come home, because there's so many traps out there. And you hear them all, you know, you know the traps out there with this internet. These yeah, kids fall into these traps, and you know what, before you know it, they're on the other side of the ocean. Yeah, but, so I don't understand what you're saying, is like, when should a parent feel they're missing? Or when should they report it? But what's the relationship a parent should have with their child to make sure you know, you don't have a long lapse in. I mean, should they do that? I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there, sh there I mean, should always there should always be communication with you and your child. I mean, yeah. um, it, it, sh it should always be, be constant. You should always know where your where your kids are. Um, you know, unfortunately, some some parents there, there is some sort of a disconnect. There's more working parents more than ever. Um, fathers and mothers don't don't sit down at the table with their kids as often as, you know, because of their working schedules or whatever, whatever other things, a lot more people going to school. Um, but you should always have that constant communication. Um, that's, that's one thing that parents have, I, I agree. But again, whenever the parent feels like something is wrong, they can call. If the kid just was at a, we, you know, we have kids that were staying at their friend's house too long. That's fine, nobody's in trouble. They just, we talk to the child and the parent had to maybe, you know, tell the kid, make sure your mother knows where you are, where you're, Supposed to be at home. Nobody's in trouble. It's not a. That, we hope every case was like that simple. Um, but it's when you feel something is wrong. I don't know. You know the parent. 
like if people sometimes have to call, like, oh, I had the child hasn't called in three hours. But I don't know if they're missing. Sure. Once you pause, we're going to investigate it just like it's a missing kid. We're not going to send you home and say, come back in four hours. So whenever the parent feels that they were supposed to be home and they're not home, that's when we'll start looking into it. And one thing I will say as well is um, with uh, with our detectives, especially in juvenile, we always have somebody on call. So if something comes in emergent, like a missing child, one of us is definitely coming in. We're, we're always on call. So one of us is always ready to go. Um, so, you know, within, within an hour, you know, whatever time, however long it takes us to get in there, we're, you know, and our, and our officers are very good as well. They're always, you know, they're, they're good at, you know, they have a checklist, they have certain things, a lot of them have dealt with, dealt with this before, so they're, they're looking as well, so um, we're right on it. As soon as it happens, as soon as there's an emergency situation, I mean, that's, that's top of line, top of list for us. We're coming in, we're looking, so um, we've been, you know, pretty pretty successful. We, we always find out. Okay, so. All right. All right, thank you, Steve, thank you, Dave, thank you very much for your time for us. this month. I'd like to start with uh, Ms. Rose Goldstein. Uh, Rose started her teaching career with Little Board of Ed in 1990. Taught kindergarten grades 1, 2, 4, 5, <laughs> elementary computers at school 6. She served as a science specialist for 20 years and since May 2013 as a supervisor of science. Uh, Ms. Goldstein is one of the most kindest and, and generous people that I know personally. Um, she truly has a love for Science education. Um, she has been our exemplar as far as leadership goes in the area of professional development. She, she really is a special person, one that's going to be missed by this district. Rosie's here. Can you please stand? Thank you for your passion and dedication to the students and families at Linden. Linden Board of Education, wish you all the best. Enjoy your retirement. Yes. And Rose, I'd like to just say one thing. I'm not going to give you the numbers, God, because I don't want you to crunch the numbers. But Rose and I graduated high school together back in the day. And, uh, <laughs> and you sure look a lot better than I do. And, uh, uh, but again, congratulations, and you are. I've known you since God. 14 years old. May I respond for a second? May I say something? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank you for an amazing career. I am honored and privileged to have spent all of these years here in Linden. I was born and raised in Linden. It is home. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work at all those grade levels that Mike mentioned and touch the lives of so many children and teachers. But that doesn't happen by magic. It happens because I work for wonderful superintendents, assistant superintendents, principals, and everyone that was able to support the work that I did. So I thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. Another one of our retirees, 
Claire Mead began working for us in Woodward Extension in 1991. Ms. Mead worked as the school secretary at School 8 for 25 years. During the past four years, Claire has worked as the secretary for the director of elementary language arts, federal programs, and early childhood. Uh, she's helped so many families and students over the years. Secretaries truly are the glue of the district. Um, Ms. Mead, we thank you for your passion, dedication, and enjoy your retirement. started his teaching career for Lynn Board of Education in 1997. Mr. Pack taught German at McManus, Seoul, and Lynn High School. Mr. Pack also taught IB German for many years at Lynn High School. Um, Lynn Board of Education, wish you all the best. Enjoy your retirement. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Starr began working for the Lynn Board of Education in 2014. Ms. Starr worked as a learning disability teacher consultant for the past five years. Thank you and enjoy your retirement. Zina Solch began working with the Board of Education in 1991. Zina was one of the very first bilingual Polish teachers. Ms. Solch taught Russian PSL, PSL math strategies communications and was advisor of the, Nas of the Russian National Honor Society. She has mentored numerous students and won various Russian speaking awards during her career. Thank you for your service and enjoy your retirement. Tonight we have Ms. Denise Sinclair. She began working for the Board of Ed in 2004. Denise worked as a part-time school aide at School 9 for 16 years. Thank you for your passion and dedication for the students and families living and enjoy the retirement with Ms. Sinclair.
the other two committees? Anything going on? coming up on the second. Okay, fine. Anyone else? Okay, so we'll take that. I just want to I just like to add. Um, as far as the state is concerned, which probably a lot of you didn't read in the paper uh, regarding um, state aid and all of that. If you saw it about, it had to be what, a good two or three weeks in the paper, both houses of the state legislature, if you saw one and two, and some of the, uh, a, lot, a number of the towns in the state of New Jersey <coughs> basically lost a lot of state aid last year, a lot. Like you're talking seven million, 10 million. In Tom's River's case, 40 million. Well, what they wanted to do, uh, what the state legislature wanted to do, is say, well, to those, you know, who um, basically were getting cut this state aid, they were going to waive, you know, the 2% cap you have on your taxes. The, they, were, they were asking the governor to waive that. And then by waiving it, they would tax the people in those, in those cities to make up the difference. Well, the governor said, absolutely not. The governor basically said, I'm dealing it, it's not going to case. So what's going to happen? It's not going to happen to us. We are very, very fortunate, and hopefully we're going to get more money this year. We don't know yet. But for some of these towns, like for instance, Brooktown, $7 million, they're going to have to basically cut $7 million in the school budget. And there's only way to do that is through jobs. Tom's River, $40 million. And there's about 30, 35 towns are like that that's this, this, going to be this spring. And it's going to be a very disastrous thing. I mean, people are going to lose their jobs. It's as simple as that. And uh, because they didn't come to the meeting of the mines down there, and you veto that 2%, so basically that's what's going to We are not in that position. We are in a very, all I can tell you is that we are in a very solid financial position in this district. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. So you're going to be seeing that come up. We'll have comments at the end. Okay, fine. All right. Um, okay, now as far as uh, that is concerned, uh, um, with that said, we'll go for, uh, for some comments from around the board. Any positive things we have? Okay. Um, so congratulations to our retirees, Ms. Goldstein, one of my favorite people in the district. She's the sweetest person I've ever met. Uh, long and happy retirement. Thank and you. the basketball game on uh, Tuesday. There's going to be tons of cops there. Please be safe. Don't do anything that you're going to regret. You're not going to get away with it. It's just a basketball game with kids. So just be safe. Mr. Reeves? I'd like to uh, say hello to everybody that had the time to come to the meeting today. As you may know, this is my first. Uh, here uh, my first meeting with the Board of Education. I am I have taken notes of what our parents have, have said here personally. I believe that although we have provided you with directions of what to do and what the steps are, it's important for us Board of Education to take notes to make sure that at least we, we ask what's the status of, in a future event to find out how do we go in the process of resolving these matters. Um, I am shocked about the water prices. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I, I think it goes, uh, it's something that it can easily be fixed. Uh, and again, uh, I'm taking notes of everything that, that I have the opportunity to hear from parents coming to the board and to the meeting. But, uh, but at the same time, I'd like to say that um, I'm still in my learning stage here in the Board of Education. And I'd like to uh, offer my commitment to, to the city and to the board. Uh, as well as to say that uh, throughout the uh, meetings, I would like to congratulate the teachers who have served for many years here in the, in the, uh, the city of Linden. My son graduated from Linden High School and, and went through the whole school in, in Linden, so I know how hard they worked out to kids that are currently studying in school number four, and I, and I had a lot of respect for the teachers, so congratulations on all the years that you have worked with us. And, Good time and you're retired. Thank you. Right, thank you. Ms. McGill. I'd like to welcome my condolences to the family of uh, Mr. Walter Strauss. Um, and I'd like to uh, again uh, move on to congratulate all the retirees. Uh, Ms. Golsky, thank you so much for all your service and years and dedication. It's a pleasure to have met you. Thank you. And uh, I wish you luck in your retirement. Thank you very much. We'll give you a lot of uh, vacation again. <laughs> Traveling on <laughs> <laughs> your time. Thank you. Um, okay, and I also would like to extend my condolences to the Wichkowski family. Uh, Mr. Wichkowski was my sixth grade science and math teacher, so um, he was an amazing teacher, and I would just like to extend <coughs> my condolences. I would also like to congratulate all of our retirees. Mrs. Goldstein, you brought a new name to our science program. 
boy, do I wish I was in that science program <laughs> when I was in school. Um, our children just found a new love for it. Our hands-on program is amazing, and you are just as amazing, and I wish you a healthy, happy, long retirement, and I know this is not the last that we'll be seeing. I know you're going to come back and visit us. Thank you very much. And um, I just wanted to also say that I attended a lot of events um, in the beginning of the new year, and I am very proud of our students and all that they're doing and all that um, I have seen, um, including some of the FAST events. Thank you very much for inviting us. And then I just have some other things that I wanted to address that um, I've been asked about, some of the questions that were asked of me uh, by many. Um, they asked why I voted no on some of the agenda items last month at our last meeting. And um, I voted no because what was on the reorganization meeting agenda was never discussed by the entire board. Um, discussion never happened as to who's going to be nominated for vice president, president, or order of business, the dates for our meeting, etc., things like that. Um, the mayor stood in front of us and asked us all to work together in the best interest of our children. And I honestly really thought that, you know, maybe just maybe the board would listen. And when our committee assignments came out, it was clear that we weren't going to be working together. Um, in the past, the president would ask all of the board members, you know, who would like to, they would email and say who would like to be on the committee, what committee. Uh, that never took place. Um, some members were put on three and four committees, others were just put on one. I'm just confused as to why someone would alienate a board member who is pretty much the most senior board member on the board and goes to trainings outside of mandated training and attends just about every single meeting. Uh, when asked uh, for our committee reports at our committee as a whole, I'm told by many nothing was discussed. Um, if I don't question it, then nothing is said. So I don't understand why we have committee meetings. Um, I've also asked several times to have agenda item comments brought back to our order of business, but to no avail, the public, you weren't heard. So I heard you. I hear you. I will continue to hear you, and I'll re continue to represent you because that's what I was elected to do. I won't be voting on committee reports that are not discussed, discussed from now on. I'm certainly not voting in favor of a three-person committee or some outside person to hire our new permanent superintendent because this is one of the most important jobs that this board has to do. It should be done by all of us sitting here, not just three people. All of the commissioners sitting on this dais took an oath on January 2nd in regards to school code of ethics. And with that, I challenge every board member here, especially those who seem to be on the other side, to be true and abide by this code of ethics for the betterment of the Board of Education, for the city of Linden, and most importantly, for our children who are our future.
hopefully, um, I'm pretty sure that we will be able to address uh, your concerns, uh, whether that may be the principal, the superintendent, or if you have to come back to the board, but thank you for expressing it. I'd also like to um, thank the detectives for coming out. Um, they left, but it was pretty important um, based off of the committee that we had that someone would come out and to explain to you all and us um, the protocols and the steps that um, that they take. Um, like Mrs. Uh, Johnson mentioned, we'll be celebrating Black History Month next month. Thank you for your presentation. It was lovely. I'm excited to see what you're going to present um, next month. Uh, last year, we had a beautiful presentation. Uh, we had Ms. Chase come out, and she presented a iMovie of her students. And um, <coughs> school number five also came out to do a dance presentation. So um, we're going to be having a lovely presentation, and I ask you all to please come out and invite your friends. Um, we would like everyone to be involved, including the board members and parents. So if you would like to participate, please contact Mr. Walters or Mr. Noller because he is going to be doing our presentation for us. <laughs> <laughs> we excited about that. And, um, and thank you uh, for the retirees. Thank you for your service. Um, a lot of people have dedicated a lot of their time to us. So thank you very much. And again, thank you for coming out. Um, Mr. Walters. Okay. Uh, my suit. Yeah. I, I, I would express thank you for uh, especially the board making me feel so welcome here. I know Mrs. Clary stepped out and I stepped in, and I really uh, could be more grateful to the folks who are making me feel like one of the part of the crew right from jump. So I appreciate that. Welcome to the hot seat. Hey, great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's the hot seat. So we can manage off the wall. So our meeting is here next month. So right. that's correct because of the plan. Right. right. We don't go back to the high school and turn the now we're going to keep it here. Right. Uh, I guess the other case will go out if we decide to change it. Yeah, okay. If, if there's some issue that comes up that's going to be a lot of people, we can always move this to school one. But the high school is not going to be available to us until so March. Okay, so just let you know. Okay, just one last thing before we, we adjourn right here. And just the two parents that, that came up, make sure you see my clinic right now. Give your name, give your address. So the, the comment that you had and the concerns that you had, He'll get back to you, okay? Before you leave tonight, okay? And uh, he'll get answers for whatever you need to know regarding your principles or the questions you have. He'll, he'll, he will get answers for you, okay? Other than that, I thank you all for coming out tonight. Have a good Super Bowl Sunday. And someone told me Sunday is Brown Hog Day, so I don't know what that is. There's no winter. We didn't get snow yet, so we're lucky. Have a good evening. Okay, mo uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Congratulations. Congratulations.